war für mich eben wirklich ein It was a difficult and very challenging project. It's the first time I thought I might be out of my depth. It didn't take long to realize it was going to be quite complicated. A clergyman and an artist had something planned that had never been done before. Many artists could paint a religious picture or even an altar. But you need to be a bit of a megalomaniac to paint a whole church from floor to ceiling. Größenwahn, or Megalomania, was the name of the punk band Moritz Götze was a member of when this part of Germany was still under communist rule. In the time since then, he's created a whole universe of images with incredible vitality. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure and honor to introduce you to Moritz Goetze's work. With a refreshing and light style, Moritz Goetze brings history, culture, and the present day to life in drawings, oil paintings, silk screens, and enamel works. Both of Goetze's parents were artists. Before following in their footsteps, he became a carpenter. Now he expresses his own view of the world, even in matters of faith. Whether or not he's a member of the church is insignificant. It's his receptiveness to the wonder of creation, and I would say God, even if he himself never mentions God, that make him one of the few mediators, or the only one, in this non-religious environment. Bernburg on the Saale, in the German state of Saxony-Anhalt, was once the heartland of the Reformation. Under communist rule, the town declined. With the fall of the Berlin Wall, thousands of its residents abandoned the place. Now the town is experiencing a renaissance. Artist Moritz Goetze and Pastor Sven Bayer want to be part of it. The old castle church, dedicated to St. Egidius, once belonged to the princes of anhalt baumburg Many of their ancestors are buried in the crypt. Among them is Prince Victor II, the 18th century ruler of anhalt baumburg schaumburg holm It was he who restyled the old Romanesque church in 1754 with Baroque exuberance. These elaborate tombs show how influential the rulers of Anhalt used to be. In the church, the massive royal gallery facing the apse emphasized their temporal power. The building was in a state of neglect when Sven Bayer was appointed pastor in 2001. Shortly after the fall of communism, the dilapidated crypt was repaired. The first restoration work on the church was undertaken in 2005. The superintendent wisely brought me into the church from the tower end, because you can see the organ from there. At that time, it was the only thing in the church worth looking at. When you turned around, all you saw was a grey and very ugly wall with the paint peeling off it. During the communist era, most churches in East Germany fell to rack and ruin. The plan now was to make this one a place where people could joyously express their faith. Da ist man dann aber wieder mit dieser doch bedeutsamen Kirche. This very important church had been left to disintegrate on the inside. The apse was bricked up, and all of the turn-of-the-century paintings were ruined. And so there was talk about restoring it. I can't remember exactly, but talk about what was to be done about it. How to restore it and make it, once again, a place where people meet and pray. Should it be modernized? That's the usual approach. Or should the restoration be more traditional? The artist and the pastor wrestled with these questions at the minister's home and in the artist's studio. 
abgebildet. Und dann haben wir also einzelne Motive ausgewählt. We chose a few subjects to focus on. Konzentriert haben und festgelegt oder festgelegt. Then I simply told stories, Bible stories, which he might have heard already, but couldn't remember. Geschichten, die er vielleicht schon mal gehört hat. Together we looked at pictures. We considered their relevance for today and what he could do with them. But mostly I just told stories. That was the substance of our meetings. Me telling Bible stories and the two of us looking at pictures. An unusual design for the ceiling was their first courageous decision, to make something original. Bright clouds against a blue sky, painted in enamel on steel. They got backing from the parish council and the diocese, the Lutheran Church and sponsors provided funding. Painting the sky on the ceiling of a church is nothing unusual. It's been done in many periods of art history. But the question was, how should a Gutze sky differ from, say, a Schinkel sky? From the start, he was determined that you had to see the difference. When the scaffolding was taken down and the sky was already glowing in the vaulted ceiling, Moritz Goetze designed the war paintings, drawing on the Bible stories as Pastor Bayer had told them. If it's okay, I'll cut my templates for the steel. It's like a giant jigsaw puzzle. I hope it all fits together. The artist was not in the least bit daunted by the challenge of decorating an entire church with enameled sheets of steel. Dispensing with beamer projections and computer designs, he worked from drawings and drove the 50 kilometers from his home to Baunburg, where he tried them out in the church itself. Nothing was delegated. Later, he would discuss the designs and their positioning with the pastor. I'm guided by Sven as far as the content goes. That's where he's the expert. But I look within myself for the interpretation, how I understand the stories that he suggests to me. His conversations with Pastor Bayer inspired the artist as he began each new design. Pastor Bayer was open to the artist's very free interpretation of the Bible. I've hung up the design here again where you can see the division. But I can't decide if we should let it run into the apse or not. And where the door is, do the measurements work? Yes, they work. So they do. I didn't think they would. Prince Victor II, who restyled St. Egidius in the 18th century, has a prominent position next to the apse. The next day, after a two-hour drive, Moritz Goetze arrived in Muldenthal in southern Saxony, famous for its enamel workshops. Usually, these laser machines cut sheet metal for stovepipes. But in the interests of art, in this case, they served a nobler function. So here we've got the crown of thorns and, and the fish. The metal shapes form the basis of the enamel work. Goetze cut many of the metal sheets himself, but when the workshop could help out, he availed himself of their lasers. Der Donnenkranz. 
Before the pieces were painted and fired, Goetze would take them to the church to make sure they fitted. The walls were uneven, which complicated the work enormously. After checking that the drill holes and angles matched, he took the pieces all the way back to the enamel workshop. Goetze set up his own little studio at the enamel factory. When the pieces of metal had been pre-fired, they were sprayed with a light chalky primer. In this first dust-free coat, he lightly drew floral shapes and the outline of figures. These lines ultimately appear black. Well, I don't make right angle cuts. I cut the shapes out freehand, like a paper cut, basically. And I leave lots of bits open so that, even though the enamel and steel are brutally hard materials in themselves, my ornaments and foliage take on a delicate, fragile appearance. The traditional kiln for firing enamels is located in the old part of the Muldental works. The factory was established 128 years ago. In addition to modern machines, it still has an old kiln for firing stovepipes. I'll turn off the kiln today. I'm going to put a few of my own things in and then I'll turn it off later. Right up until the last moment, Goetze was making minor corrections. The firing process takes only a few minutes and has to be observed closely. When there's a factory tour and some client is being shown around the workshops, they always say, this is our artist. It's great being part of a factory, a completely different world. After firing the primary coat, the artist added other colors, painting or spraying them onto the metal waiting for each to dry before proceeding to the next. Superfluous dry paint was removed in several layers. Then the painting continued, until finally, the completed piece was put back in the kiln and fired again. It's basically a relative it's basically a rather simple technique. But what's special about enamel is its material properties. It has an aura that just makes people want to touch it. They feel it's something special. Time and again, Moritz Goetze took freshly fired enameled metal sheets to the church in Baumburg to fit them into the jigsaw puzzle. The heavy sheets were attached to the uneven walls with a total of more than 2,000 roll plugs and screws.
Pastor Sven Bayer explained why the enamel technique was especially appropriate. It would have been impossible to do a fresco because it wouldn't have stayed fixed to the walls. And that's why, once again, it was a wonderful act of providence that when it was clear that Moritz Goethe was going to be involved in the project, that he would be working in enamel and that it would be at a slight distance from the walls. That was a great relief to construction engineers and conservators. In spite of having more than 200 square meters of images hung on them, the walls are able to breathe and remain dry. It's something that will endure. The parish still could say, we don't like it, let's take it off the walls, let's put this childish nonsense in the attic. And then some future generations could decide, provided it doesn't get stolen, to put it up again in a hundred years' time. Moritz Goetze managed to stay relaxed and good-humoured, even after working a 60-hour week. Family and friends gave him a lot of support. His wife, Gitta, who's also a successful artist, enjoys getting together with their friends as much as he does. The artist would make an early start, even when some mishap meant that he'd had to work late the previous day. When I tried to mount this yesterday, I realized it didn't fit. So I turned it around and painted the reverse side last night in the studio, and then I fired it again. And now it fits. Fortunately, he has a kiln at home, too. That allows him to fire pieces quickly right at home when necessary. Ah, there are the clouds you promised. Yeah, I thought that to match the height of the hymn board, and then that big tree, well, I just put in a couple of clouds. That's something new, wood made from enamel. <laughs> the images on the south side were inspired by the New Testament. That is a stadt so we've got the wall and the man riding on the donkey, which evokes the time of the original story. But of course, back then there were no skyscrapers or modern buildings. I put those in to bring us into the present. I think the way you've portrayed it is very unusual. I've never seen a composition like it. But the subject is familiar, and you recognize it immediately as your work. I'm lost. The apse was to be decorated next. The plan? To display biblical scenes in large floral frames in the semicircular space behind the altar. But then they discovered there'd been a slight misunderstanding. But that's what you wrote. No, uh, I said grape. Yeah. The symbolic character of church painting depends on a lot of details. The meaning of a particular flower or animal. And often the symbols are multi-layered. Sven Bayer said a dove would be appropriate. The German word is Taube, so I painted a dove. But when I proudly showed him the design, he said, I didn't say Taube, I said Taube. That's the German word for grape. But that was okay, because I'd made those too. <laughs> Sometimes Pastor Bayer needed to get used to Goetz's mischievous ideas. 
Dann haben wir ja immer wieder überlegt, ob man nicht auch ähm, Zitate We thought about including quotations. einbringen kann. And I suggested a very important ich, Psalm. Also einen ganz wichtigen Psalm äh, genannt. Und äh, das äh, ist It appears also hier, dann blurred in this number plate. Sozusagen in dieser, äh, Not a proper Nummer quotation, ja, but, kein echtes Zitat. well, rather cryptic, also, I suppose. Das ist schon ziemlich kryptisch, ne? also, ich denke mir mal, das I think a lot of people are going to be taking their iPhones and Googling 118 to see what that means. Over many months, one section of painting after another was installed in the church and began to attract visitors from far afield. These Bavarians said they'd never seen anything like it. I should probably just shut myself up in the church for two or three days so I can appreciate it myself. It's a strange feeling that I've never had with any other of my works. The church choir came regularly to practice during the process and there was always something new for them to admire. Most of the parishioners have been impressed by Goethe's creations. There were some people who, from the start, said it's not my church anymore. And I can understand that. They're people who were responsible for the restyling of the church 45 years ago, in the early 1970s. And now they have to watch another generation creating an entirely new church image. I can understand them, but I personally prefer the new version. Inspired by Moritz Goetz's artwork, the church organist, Sebastian Sass, composed an oratorio for two choirs and orchestra to be performed for the first time in St. Egidius Church at the end of May. The oratorio is dedicated to the Holy Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, and draws on traditional musical forms, perhaps in contrast to Goetz's paintings. But the composer sees no contradiction. I don't know how people will receive it. I hope they are touched by what's written here and captured in images, as well as by my music. Trinity Sunday is a major celebration in the Lutheran Church. St. Egidius was packed with lots of young people in the congregation. Moritz Goetz's remarkable images speak to a new generation, and Sebastian Zuss's music links them with a long tradition. Ich danke Moritz Götze, der heute I would like to say thank you to Moritz Goetze, who is here with us today, for his courage and diligence in allowing us to see this church in a new way. And I hope now that the music will fulfill us and open a window to eternity. Amen.